Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me take this opportunity to welcome one and all to the message of hope. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today is a good day. Hallelujah. To give your lives over under the control of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we are here. Yes, we know what's going on around the world, even in our own nation. My God. But God is still able he's allowing us to go through he's purging he's doing whatever he has to do he's allowing us to go through this storm this storm will be over yes it is going to be over and some will win some will lose as we go through the storm that is what happens lives are destroyed in a natural storm in a physical storm things happen in a physical storm and so this storm that we are going through hallelujah lives will be lost hallelujah but we do not want lives to be lost without Christ that's why we preach the good news of salvation that's why we preach the message of salvation that's why we preach the gospel hallelujah so that everyone everyone will come to that place to accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord. We were looking at God is long-suffering. We looked in the epistle of 2 Peter chapter 3 where we were looking at God is long-suffering. Amen? So before we go into the word again, let us just look to God to help us today and to minister by his Holy Spirit to bring healing, restoration, salvation, sanctification, deliverance, and all that we stand in need of, what God is able. We look to him this morning to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Yes, we need God. We all need him. Sometimes we act as though we don't need God because of the blessings he has bestowed upon us. And it is not we ourselves who got those things he allowed us. It is he who gave us the strength to get well, to get whatever we get. All that we have, all that we are, comes from God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father God, I give you praise and I give you thanks for your goodness. Thank you for another day, another opportunity to share a word. Bless us all today, oh God. Strengthen us. Restore, revive, refresh, heal those that need to be healed physically, spiritually, socially, mentally, financially, in every aspect of our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. You are the only one who could really meet those needs, deep seated needs in our lives. My God, we look to the east, sometimes we look to the west, and nothing, we come up empty. But when we look to you, oh God, you meet those needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you. We bless your name today. Just have your way. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Be strong out there. Be strong. Be strong. Let us all be strong in the face of what's... Let us go under. Let us not go under. Let us not give up. Hallelujah. It's not over t until it's over. Jesus God, he has the last say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us hold on. Do not give up. Do not give in. Be strong. Hold on to the word of God. Hallelujah. Those of you who need God, we all need God. Hallelujah. In this time, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your hearts towards God. He's our deliverer. He's our savior. He's our healer. Turn to God today. Turn to him. Before it's eternally too late. Even in this time of suffering and pain and hurt and distress. And not knowing what to do. Turn to God. 
He will help us. He will guide us. He will protect and preserve us. He will meet our needs. Hallelujah. Even in this time, we lift up the heads of our nation, the leaders, decision makers. Before him, we continually do that. And pray for wisdom, that wisdom would prevail. Hallelujah. And stop the negativity. Too much negatives and false information. Making people afraid and disheartened and discouraged. And uncertain. Trust God. Whose report you're going to believe? Trust God. Whose report you will believe? Believe the report of the Lord. God is true. He's faithful. His word is true. His word is true from the beginning. We can trust God. Trust his word. Trust his son Jesus Christ. Trust what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. Trust the Holy Spirit to lead us in the way that we should go. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, have mercy upon us. That's all we could ask for. Mercy. God is merciful. His mercies are from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. God is a merciful God. All we could ask him. Look to him and ask him for mercy. Mercy. Hallelujah. Ask him for his mercy. Yes, long suffering. He's patient. Amen. So God is long-suffering. Amen. The scripture we read was from chapter 3 of 2 Peter. But the verse we were zeroing in on is verse 9. Verse 9, verse 9, verse 9. The apostle Peter is explaining or giving this encouragement to the brethren. And it's not only for the believers, it's for every man jack every man every woman every boy every girl every young man it is for all of us because it came according to the word of god there there arose some people because they heard and they knew that jesus christ said that's the message is coming again and they were saying look how long you all have been saying that where is his coming? And they started to ridicule, speak about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in, in, in a ridic ridiculous manner. Ridicule it. Yes? And so Peter is explaining, and it seems seemingly like the brethren were losing hope. They were losing heart. They too were becoming discouraged because of what the others were saying. And, and they were under pressure. Like now, like now in this present time, people under pressure back home from work no job no money home and it's not because those at the helm wants to punish no they do not want to punish people S -s drastic measures need drastic situation have to take drastic measures we may not like it but it will be for our good for the good of the nation in the end yes yeah, so these people the brethren at that time were going through trials and testings and pressure and they and they they knew jesus christ was coming and these coffers these people who arose they they, they came up and uh, started saying ridiculous things about the coming of the lord jesus christ and hearing that Many people were discouraged. Even now, you, we are hearing so many things about the vaccine. Hearing so many different descriptions of the vaccines. People are being discouraged. Hearts are fainting, failing them. Because of what is being put out there. About the vaccine, about the virus and people are becoming afraid and discouraged disheartened and want to throw up their hands but hold on there hold on keep hope alive keep your hope alive do not give up do not give in to the threatenings of the enemy be strong be courageous hold on Get into the word. Encourage yourselves in the word of God. 
If you never used to read the Bible, get into the word now. Get encouragement from God and from his word. In spite of the, what, what everybody else is saying around you. Hear what God is saying. Hear what God is saying today. Hear what he's saying. Hear what he's, he wants to tell you. Go into the word. Do not be discouraged. There's enough going on out there. Enough on all these social media, all forms, all the platforms. Enough to discourage and make people give up. But I say, hold on. Hold on. Trust the word of God. Get into the word. You have time now to get into the word. You know, take up the Bible. You know, I never used to read this Bible here, but let me see if I could start, start to read the word. Start to pray. And see a turnaround in, this, in your situation, in your life. Yes, so there were those who were speaking evil of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and saying hey since our fathers fell asleep everything continued the same and that is not true <laughs> things got worse things didn't remain the same hallelujah and Peter is saying listen to me the fact that God Jesus Christ hasn't come as yet don't think because he hasn't put in his appearance he's, he's slack He's not a slacker. Verse 9 that we are looking into. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, not your promise and my promise. His personal promise. He promised John 14. He said, I am going, I am going, I am going to come again. He said it. And his word is true. You better believe it. Because when we look around, something is about to come down something big is about to come down amen god the lord god god is not slack concerning his promise his promise of coming as some men come slackness but one why he's long suffering it's long suffering i gave some meanings for long suffering and let's just go back bearing problems or annoying behavior <laughs> with persons or annoying behavior having patience endure patiently to suffer long to bear patiently not given to hasty anger or punishment being tolerable being tolerant long suffering uh, is associated with mercy god is merciful when he would pass judgment come on he shows mercy yeah, it's okay, I'm going to give them another chance. I'm going to give him another chance. I'm going to give her another chance. Merciful. And I have two more meanings. Long suffering. A self-restraint of the mind before it gives room or gives way to action or passion. You know, <laughs> sometimes we, we get so worked up over a situation and we want to take vengeance. Come on, we want to let loose on, on whoever it is. <laughs> but we hold back. We hold back. And God said in his word, do not avenge yourselves. Do not avenge yourself because vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Yes, self-restraint. And many times as we read through the word of God, when God wanted to dole out punishment on the people or on whatever nation, on whatever people, he would hold back that judgment. He would show mercy. He would show patience and long suffering. Yes, sometimes we read, and it repented God of the evil that he intended to do. Not that he, he repent of any sin. He just changed his mind. He just changed his mind from re releasing his fierce anger and judgment upon people and upon nations. So long suffering also means a self restraint of the mind before it gives room or gives way to action or passion. It also means forbearance. Long suffering has to do with the person who, who has the power to avenge himself. Yeah? He has the power to take vengeance, <laughs> yet refrains from the exercise of this power. That's our God. He has the power to dole out 
punishment and judgment and disaster and you name it. He has the power because of sin, of our sinful and wicked behavior. But he holds back. He holds back, giving us time. He's not willing that any should perish. It's one of the reasons for his being long-suffering. But he's long-suffering to us, what? And there are many versions of this very scripture. Some think it's only for the believers to us, what? He doesn't want the believers to be, to be lost, but then the believer is already saved. They're already saved, so, <laughs> yes? But it is to all people. For God so loved the world, he loves mankind, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish in a devil's hell. That is not there, perish, but perish in a devil's hell. <laughs> but have everlasting life. That's what he wants for all of us. We have everlasting life, we have eternal life, and eternal life begins here, not when you die. Nobody could repent after they die. He wants us to have eternal life begins here and now, unto eternity. Not willing. It is not in the plan of God, it was never in his plan. <laughs> he wanted to have fellowship with man, right to man, but sin came in the way, came in the mix. Sin was introduced, so God had to send his son. So he's not willing that any should perish. Hallelujah. And he made provision so that none would perish. Made that provision through his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, that none should perish. And the second reason, according to the word of God, but contrast, contrasted little conjunction word, yes? He's not willing that any should perish. So you have this, but, but that all should come to repentance. That's the essence of God's desire. Hallelujah, that all, but that all, would come to repentance. And when he says all, he really means all. Although all may not. Because there are people who have rejected accepting Jesus Christ, uh, who have rejected, rejected uh, confessing their sins and coming to that place to repent. They have rejected that because they think they are good. Uh, and Jesus said in his word, he didn't come for the righteous, but he came to call sinners to repentance. I was a sinner born in sin. Yes, sinner saved by grace. I am saved. I do not practice sin. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I am moving on to perfection. And all those who have accepted Jesus Christ as personal savior, they practice sin. That's how we lived. Sinful lives, practicing sin, practicing sinners. Doesn't mean that we would not do something wrong or say something wrong or behave in, in, some, in some contrary way. Yes, we are moving on to perfection. Hallelujah. Sometimes you hear this, um, uh, this saying, there go I but for the grace of God. When we see other people and their behavior, you, we, you say, um, there go I. But for the grace of God, left to ourselves, we do anything, live anyhow. But there's a power greater in us that keeps us from doing those things. The power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, keeps us, restrains us from living as we lived before. Amen. So God does not want could, could you understand that? He doesn't want you to perish in a devil's hell. He doesn't want you to perish here on earth right now. Perish. Because eternal life begins here. He says, I came to give the life and I give it more abundantly. Abundant life begins here. Not when you get to glory. It begins here. And now, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, he does not want you to perish. He doesn't want us to perish. He wants us to have 
eternal life. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Doesn't want, listen, hell is real. Jesus spoke about hell. If there were no hell, he wouldn't talk about hell. Even, it's not a parable. This, when the scripture spoke about, Jesus was speaking about the man, the rich man and the poor man. They both died. But one went to hell. And the other went into Abraham's bosom. bosom. The rich man. Not because he was rich. But he left God out of his life. He left God out of his life. He, 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 he lived for, well, let's say, one woman and song, as people say. And left God out of his life. He died. He ended up, he opened his eyes in hell, is what Jesus said. That's not a parable. And the other guy, the poor man, Lazarus, who was fill, filled with sores, he was carried, the Bible says, he was carried. He was escorted into Abraham's bosom. Hallelujah, place of comfort, a place of rest. While he was on earth, he was tormented, he, he didn't have anything. The Bible tells us he sat at the doorstep of the rich man. The rich man had everything he needed. He, he didn't have to scratch his head to know what to wear or what to eat. And the Bible tells us the dog came and licked the poor man's sores. Both of them died. Rich people die. Poor people die also. But rich or poor die with Christ in your life. Young or old, die with Christ in your life. Black or white, die with Christ in your life. Because God does not want any man to perish. Hallelujah. What is the second reason why he's holding back? Don't think God is slack and he forgot now. Nah, he has not forgotten. <laughs> he has not forgotten. That promise. It will happen sooner than we think. But that all should come to repentance. That's the message. Jesus, John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, he preached repentance. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sinful ways. <laughs> Some, there was a topic, a message, turn or burn. <laughs> Either you turn away from sin or you burn in the devil's hell. Because hell is real. Hell is real. Just as heaven, we only want to talk about heaven. Heaven and going there, yes? Heaven is real. And if heaven is real, hell is also real. Yes? Just as there is a heaven, there is also a hell because Jesus spoke about it. And the Bible says hell had enlarged herself. Hell has enlarged her mouth to receive the unrepentant who die. There is a book, Vision of Heaven. I read the book, Vision of Heaven, Vision of Hell. This woman in the spirit the Lord took her to hell and she saw like truckloads, dumpsters, truckloads of people being thrown into hell eh, by the minute. Just emptied into hell and being emptied into hell. Yes, daily, moment by moment. Hell is receiving people who have not repented of their sins who have not accepted Jesus Christ as personal savior, who have not allowed the blood of Jesus Christ to be applied to their lives, to cleanse from their sin. Hallelujah, you die without Christ. That's the place, there's no purgatory. Hallelujah. Dying without Christ is sealed. Your doom, it's sealed. Sealed. Accept Jesus Christ today before it is too late. But that all should come to repentance. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ.
preach repentance the apostles preach repentance before Jesus Christ he said repentance must be preached in his name hallelujah for the remission of sins repentance repent 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 turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and be gloriously saved today and while Jesus is tarrying hallelujah the believer ought to be occupied Jesus said occupy till I come occupy do what you got to do for me do what you got to do keep on doing what you have to do you have a job to go to do that but keep your eyes on Jesus keep your eyes on the eastern skies look up for your redemption draws night long for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ long for it but do not get weary in waiting. Wait patiently. Wait in his presence. Hallelujah. Wait praying and praising. Wait serving. Yes. Wait hoping. Because he's going to put in his appearance. God is a long-suffering God. He's patient. He's patient. He's waiting for you to come. Come to him. He says, come unto me. All in that labor and a heavy laden and I will give you. He says come now, don't put it off. Come now. You have time now. Today is the day of salvation. Come now. And ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be gloriously saved for all eternity. Hallelujah. Do not neglect. Do not take God's long suffering for granted. He's waiting on you who are not yet saved. He's waiting on us as people of God to get our lives right. Get our act together. Because we don't know when the trumpet will sound. And he puts in his appearance. Hallelujah. Father God, I give you praise and I give you thanks for your word. Continue to bless it to our minds, to our spirit, to our soul. Let it continue to resonate in our spirit. Let lives be changed today, oh God. Soul saved to the honor and glory of your name. I pray in Jesus' almighty name. God bless you as you continue to view this message of hope every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. on TIN. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay home if you don't have to go anywhere. God bless you. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope.